Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Scorpio. If Scorpio is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, knock, 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 and let's see what do these tea leaves have to say tonight, 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 and Scorpio, <laughs> your card for tonight is uh, the tower, okay, so uh, I think that there's probably continued disruption to your life because of whatever has been going on. And we talked about kind of a big change last week, um, or last reading, maybe it wasn't even a week ago, uh, and discussed, um, you know, how this might be really an opportunity for you to uh, start something new, go a new direction, have a clean break, um, and so, We'll see what we have going on here tonight. All right. So, so, so. Let's look at this one. Okay. So, <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit like, mm, a little tiny bit apprehensive. But I think this is going to end up being um, in your favor, of course. Okay. So, we have a turtle. And it looks like it's raising its head and it is eating something. So this leads me to believe that after kind of a long, arduous trip, journey, going about the path, you've come to a place of um, at least stopping and getting some sustenance, okay? So I really do believe that this tower card is our, has already happened. Um, that this is something that uh, really has changed what your life looks like. This is a fundamental thing. Um, if this is maybe, um, you know, like a breakup um, and some kind of illness, uh, loss of um, employment, or you've quit your job or, you know, whatever. Um, maybe uh, some kind of housing issue, um, something gone wrong in the home, some kind of, um, you know, wear and tear, things happen. Houses, uh, <laughs> they tend to have problems once in a while. So whatever it is, I think that this was, you know, it was a big deal. At least it feels like it was a big deal to you, okay? Um, I also feel like this might be something like a job um, or a relationship ending. Because we see the turtle, I feel like it feels, it's it been a feeling of uh, continued work um, over the span of some time. And then this thing happened, okay? Uh, as I like to say about these cards that kind of feel a little bit ominous, the uh, tower, the hanged man, the death card, um, you know, some of the other, uh, some of the other pip cards and things. Um, we, when they come up, we have a tendency to be like, oh no. You know, something terrible is going to happen. Well, uh, usually I would say that it is something coming to the consciousness, right? It, you're finally looking and examining something, right? And maybe it was um, like an acute uh, incident, situation, cir circumstance, whatever, um, but because the card comes up, it means that you're facing it. You're looking for some kind of resolution so you can move on, right? And that's not a bad thing. We're always going to have things come up in life. 
So I feel like you are coming to terms with this. I think that you are going to really go into a, a uh, profound phase of taking care of yourself. Really um, making sure that you are doing the things that you need to do for self-care um, to keep yourself feeling stable. Um, minding your mental health, your physicality, um, things like, you know, hygiene, eating, intentional movement, um, all of which uh, are things that can definitely um, be less of a priority when you feel like you're in crisis. But I think that you really are, um, you're being mindful. Okay, and uh, that's so important. I think that you're really um, amazing at advocating for yourself. I think you're really amazing at noticing how you're feeling. And, um, you know, I also think just this feeling of kind of slowing down a little bit, at least in this moment, you know, as you are hearing this, reading when it is activated by you listening to it i think that you are to a point where you're ready to start making some decisions for yourself you know the important choices um where are you going to go from here right and how are you going to fortify yourself um you know as a as a situation has just happened or if you're still kind of in the middle of it now, um, I do see a nice, beautiful, long stemmed flower. So I think that there's a lot of growth going on. I do not think that, um, this will be wasted. You know, you're going to come out really blooming because of this. There is growth. There is, um, a lot of vitality here. Uh, this idea of being able to fortify yourself. I think that you are not a person that is a stranger to some chaos, right, in life. So um, although this feels like a big thing, I don't think it is something so foreign to you that you have no idea what to do. I think that you have been through some things before. And, um, you know, in little ways, you're very prepared uh, to kind of face the troubles that life can bring. Um, but of course, you know, um, there's never a good time to have some kind of upset happen. So, um, I think that, you know, you, I get, there will be the blooming, growing, but also thinking about this kind of turn towards taking care of yourself. I think kind of, you know, the metaphor, taking care of your garden, um, you know, feeding it, making sure it's getting enough sun, um, pulling out the weeds, uh, you know, and just really tending to these growing things that you love so much. And of course, these are parts of your psyche, your emotionality and your spirituality. And also of course your physical being. But um, I do think that, you know, all of this is coming together. Um, you know, ultimately these kinds of things that happen in our lives, um, they can feel so big and they can, they will change the landscape of, uh, the, the world as we know it, or at least how we perceive it, how we experience our, our individual, um, you know, lives, um, environments, sacred spaces. But I don't think that's always a terrible thing, even if it feels terrible in the moment, right? Um, we also have here, it looks like a cow and so something very sacred. Okay. A sense of serenity. Um, I feel like you really are at a point where, 
um, in a lot of ways you just kind of want to lay down and give yourself over to whatever um, it is that you find comfort and um, a direct kind of line to the divine to that kind of cosmic consciousness and I think that um, you know that's not a terrible idea uh, I think that getting rest especially emotional and spiritual rest where you can um, is so important when we are going through things that uh, are very difficult um, of course you know um, in some ways we have to remain proactive because this could be you know a change in how you make resources uh, where you're living um, you know if, if it is like something has gone wrong in the home you have to fix it uh, these things sometimes can't wait so um, you know a nice balance of being proactive but also allowing for yourself to maybe get some extra sleep um, do some uh, intentional movement finding time to maybe go out and be with nature um, find some quiet time alone time um, and I know it's not easy for anybody to um, you know just kind of switch it up especially when things you know there's a lot of moving parts and things are happening but ultimately we have to think about uh, you know the bigger picture and sometimes we really just have to be selfish and take those 20 minutes to go you know be be by ourselves um to breathe <laughs> to go you know look at the trees or whatever whatever it is you do to kind of ground yourself um and to make this a a practice each day um at least for a while and see if you notice that it helps at all um, you know, it, I think the first few times with anything, we can start doing it and think, oh, okay, well, here's another person telling me to do something that really is just a waste of my time. But if you have the resolve to kind of um, make something a practice for at least a few weeks, right, a month would be beautiful, um, you might start to notice that things are changing. Um, so if you are able, um, please implement some kind of relaxation technique, mindfulness. Um, you know, I talk a lot about uh, when we are having big emotions, when we are in our anxiety, um, you know, if there's anger coming up, there are things you can do like going and taking a shower to change your body temperature. So if you are angry, you want to take a cooler shower. If you are feeling kind of depressed and, and um, you know, moving a little bit slower, go and take a nice warm shower. Um, you know, I know it's not easy. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find the motivation to even do that. Uh, but um, when we go to water and when um, we change the temperature, at least that we feel, um, you know, on our skin, uh, it really does take us out of that immediate um, emotion that we have uh, for a moment. You know, there's a little bit of a reprieve there. Enough that maybe we can get in there and try some of our mindfulness. Maybe mantras, chanting, humming. I like to hum. I don't do tons of chanting, like chanting, chanting. But um, for me, I like to sometimes uh, hum. And like if I'm in a seated place or in bed, especially when I'm having panic attacks or I'm going through, I have, uh, and I've, I've shared this before in here, I have PTSD and I have ADHD amongst some other diagnoses of anxiety stuff, but um, rocking myself, even if I'm like in a fetal position, um, you know, really doing some self-soothing type things and doing the humming at the same time. And I feel like this really changes kind of the frequency of our thinking, um, of just how we feel connected to our environment. And, um, 
you know, I think that when we begin these types of uh, techniques, it can feel kind of silly. Um, or, you know, you're just so in this, the, the situation that's happening. Um, it could feel like, why would I, you know, why would I do that? That's, you know, ridiculous. But I, I do implore you to try some different things. Go to the internet, look up some lists on mindfulness techniques, self-soothing techniques, stimming, um, you know, uh, things to deescalate your anxiety. Uh, you know, I, there's so many different ones and every time I kind of go online and look, I see different things too. So, um, you know, I just kind of mentioned some of the stuff that I've done or have tried, um, and I find useful, but there are so many, um, even just looking up lists, you know, of things, uh, and implement them as you will. And I think really just, you know, getting over that hump of, um, of resistance <laughs> because I too, sometimes I'm like, that does not sound like it would be very helpful, but it, you know, it really, um, sometimes you'd be surprised. So I think, you know, just trying things and as you find something that maybe sounds like it would be useful to you, then, like I said, trying it for a month, right? Just keep doing something for a month and see how it changes, how you're feeling, how you're experiencing yourself, how you're experiencing your feelings. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to look at this one. It looks like the entrance to, there's a doorway, the entrance to a temple there. And then over here, we have a person who is in kind of this um, seated devotional uh, posture. Okay. Maybe on their knees or maybe they are seated um, with maybe uh, folded legs. But whatever it is, they are holding something and there's a bird flying to them. Okay. So I feel like there is this calling and we probably talked about this in the last reading for Scorpio, um, a calling to your spirituality. I think that whatever that looks like, um, it doesn't have to have anything to do with a higher power or any kind of system. Um, but whatever you do, uh, to express, you know, that part of your unseen self, right? Your, your psyche, your psychic, um, connection to the universe. Uh, I think that this is a good time to indulge that. Uh, really spend some time, um, contemplating, um, thinking about some of the questions of life that, uh, really seem important to you, right? Where we all can have our separate things, you know, some, some of us, we just think, well, you know, what does it all mean? Or what am I supposed to do in my life? Or is there a God? Is there a goddess? Is there something past death? You know, for me, um, my life, one of my big life's work, my old, one of my ultimate contemplations and I don't mind sharing this even though it's probably one of the most sacred things about my life is um, searching out my personal original virtues okay and um, trying to work backwards through all of the conditioning and all of the learned things and um, find those things that are my original virtues, not the ones that are prescribed by, you know, some kind of system or some other person, but you know, what I feel like are my own. Okay. So whatever your big questions are, I think this is a good time to think about some of that stuff as you are doing this other work and you're doing a lot of work. I can sense that, but often that's what these big changes in life are about. They shake up how we live and it might feel pretty terrible sometimes, but it does make an opening for us to get back to the most important things without all the other stuff that we kind of collect 
when things are going good, right, we are often just completely cluttered with nonsense, totally enchanted by things that are not fundamentally important to our path. Okay, so one of the silver linings of having some, um, you know, tough situa situations is that we can get refocused. Okay, recentered. Okay, let's see. What else do we have over here? Now, um, we have, it looks like a scythe or a sickle. I always forget what they are. <laughs> this is a little handheld one. I have one on my wall. Um, the curved one. So, uh, there will be a harvest to reap soon. I think that once we get past some of this stuff, you, I mean, you're just going to be like a field full of beautiful things coming to their ripeness. You know, I just, I feel like this is a, it's, it's a important change in your life. It's maybe a very uncomfortable one, but it is a blip in the larger scheme of things. Okay. And I think that, you know, well, I know that you're a beautiful, powerful, passionate being. Okay. So don't get stuck in this. Don't get, do not get stuck in resenting whatever is happening. You don't want to succumb to the feelings of loss, to the, um, you know, the anger of feeling maybe wronged or uh, it should have gone this way. It could have gone this way. Being mad at somebody else, being mad at yourself, you know. Um, of course, we're all, we all feel those things, but you have to try to work through them. Let them go, okay? Keep it moving, right? Okay, so let's see what we have over here. I have a fish, okay, and we have a power sign here, and also we have a little heart right there. So we have a lot of abundance. We have you coming into a place of power, okay? Um, you maybe feel a little shaken, but I think this is going to jolt you right into that, that powerful uh, posture right back into, as they say, right back up on the horse, right? And I feel like with the fish, there's going to be an abundance. So say like you lost a job or um, you quit a job because it did not suit you or whatever. I think the next thing is going to be even better. Um, it's gonna, it feels a little scary now, but the next thing is really going to not only fulfill you, but I think that you're going to have a lot more success, okay? And then with the heart, there's always the ever love there. I really think that, um, you know, you are such a loving person. Uh, I think that, you know, and we talked about this in the last one, I think. Um, there can be moments of anger, for sure. Um, but I think that you love so big and once you get through some of this kind of darkness that comes along with the kind of falling of the tower incident, uh, you know, it's going to be there. You're just going to be in a place of, of great joy, of great love and eventually contentment in the things that are going on. Um, I really actually think that it's an, this is going to be kind of an exciting new beginning to, to whatever um, you have next, okay? So, um, our cards that we're going to pull from today for this cycle, in the last cycle we used those gratitude cards, if you can remember. Um, this time we're just going to use some affirmation cards. I'm going to... Uh, and these are the wild bohemian affirmation cards. And we're just going to um, kind of go here, go through somewhere in here, oh, and pick one. And these ones are so pretty, aren't they? Okay, and then we're going to see. It says, I have come. 
You have nothing to hide, nothing to prove. You know who you are in love. There you go. And I think this is it. There's, you know, you are this person of abundant love, of the capacity to love, unlike most people. Um, I think that you also have the capacity to rage as well. Um, but if you choose the love, <laughs> you know, I think that that really is going to be the thing that kind of equalizes a lot of this uh, messiness, messiness, right? Um, it's going to be the thing that really gets you through whatever's going on. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and uh, the love, but also the passion, which they go hand in hand, right? Um, so passion for whatever it is that, uh, you know, moves you. And, um, I think that's also going to be the other thing. So get involved in whatever, um, you have been wanting to work on, right? If creative projects, business, um, you know, relationship, whatever it is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such... A <laughs> I start singing. Um, it's always such a, um, a pleasure and an honor, truly. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to like the video, uh, it really helps the channel get into the algorithm. And we know the algorithm kind of decides everything for us. So... Uh, we like to make it happy and um, we can do that by liking the video, watching the readings from the beginning to the end, sharing the uh, videos on other social medias. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. Um, between now and the next Scorpio, you can watch your other placements, your solar, lunar, ascendant, slash rising, and Venus, and cross-watching. Uh, of course, you don't have to do any of these things, but I like to mention them so you know how you can support the channel if you so choose. Um, and other than that, please leave a comment. I love hearing from you. I read all of them. Um, it takes me a day or two sometimes to get back because I do reply to each one. Um, but also, you know, life is just very hectic <laughs> with a toddler. So, um, other than that, what do we have? That's it. Okay. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll talk in just a few days. <laughs>